Hi there! Today I'm going to show you how to make my roasted winter squash detox soup. Why do I call it detox soup? Because it's absent of dairy, fats, and animal proteins, which means it's light on the digestion, easy on the liver and gallbladder, and a smooth mover through the intestines, which all those properties help promote the whole body detoxifying. This soup is packed with nutrients such as vitamin A, essential minerals, polyphenols, and over 25 different antioxidants. It's amazing. This soup is also a prebiotic. A prebiotic is what feeds your probiotics, your beneficial gut bacteria. This soup is gonna warm your soul during the fall and winter months and feed your body pure nutrition. So let's get started. You can use just about any variety of winter squash, such as butternut, kabucha, sunshine, hubbard, buttercup, delicata, to name a few. The only one I recommend not using is the spaghetti squash. The squash variety that I'm going to be cooking with today is a sunshine. It looks like a pumpkin, but it's not a pumpkin. I really like it because it has a fabulous, deep orange, meaty flesh perfect for things like this. In this footage it may look like I burned the squash but I didn't. Yes it is tinged a little bit on the tips but as you can see the flesh of the squash is not burned. What I did here is I caramelized it in the oven instead of a saute caramelized perhaps you've heard of caramelized onions. I did a light caramelization of the winter squash, the onions and there's actually some garlic in there too underneath. Caramelization increases the nuttiness, the heartiness of the flavor of the squash and the onion and the garlic as well. It's so yummy. That's why I've chosen to do it. Now, if you're interested in learning how to caramelize your vegetables in the oven, particularly winter squash, onions, garlic, and such, stay tuned to the end and I'll give you a video link for that. As for here, we're just gonna jump right in to the soup making process. You're going to need two cups of cooked squash. Empty your squash into your blender container. You're then going to add your caramelized onions and garlic. And what you're going to notice at the bottom of the pan is this very deep, dark, brownish, reddish kind of juice. That's the caramelization. Notice it's not black. If it were black, it would mean it was burned. But this deep brown color means that it is successfully caramelized. Next, you're going to add two cups of vegetable broth. Make sure that your squash, onions, garlic, and vegetable broth are all cooled down. We're gonna run this through the blender and we don't want any steam pressure building up, otherwise things could explode and get pretty messy. Whether you're cooking on gas or electric, you want the stove heat turned too low. Blend it in your blender till you have a really nice, creamy, smooth texture. Then you're gonna add another cup and a half of vegetable broth. From here, it's time to add the herbs. I am adding fresh thyme. This is from my garden. If you don't have a garden or if it's the winter time, you can buy fresh thyme from the grocery store. I'm going to pull the leaves off the stem and put it into the soup here. And be sure not to put the stems in because they turn out really bad in the soup. And you're gonna do the same for the oregano that I have here now as well. It's sea salt time. Use a minimally processed sea salt. I personally love the Celtic sea salt. Minimally processed means it's not bleached, it's not stripped of its mineral content, and no anti-caking agents are added to it. I added one full teaspoon to this pot. Give it a stir with the whisk. Now give it a taste. This is the part where if you feel it needs more herbs or more salt or a dash of pepper, I'm not adding pepper to this, but if you would like pepper or anything else you feel would complement this soup best to your taste buds, now's the time to add it. Put the lid on and allow it to simmer at a very low boil on the low heat for 15 minutes. 15 minutes may seem like a very short simmer time, but remember that the onions, the garlic, and the squash are already cooked. Secondly, this soup has a thickness to it and it evaporates down very quickly. So if you allow it to sit on the stove too long, it will start to burn at the bottom. 
This recipe makes two servings of soup. Each bowl here is getting three ladlefuls. If you want to make a larger portion size of the soup recipe, just simply double the recipe. It saves very well in the fridge. It'll hold for a good week, maybe even week and a half. And you can freeze it if you want a longer storage time. I always like to make things look good as well as taste good. So I'm gonna add some garnish to the soup. Just some of those oregano leaves that we added earlier. And then a couple of sprigs of thyme on top. On the second bowl, I'm going to give an alternative here. I've got some fresh chives that I've chopped. I'm putting those in the center as well as some fresh diced tomato. Don't you just love the red, orange, and green contrast colors? I do. That's the artist in me. I'm going to dip in here and taste this fresh, delicious flavors of the tomato and the squash together. You may not think that's a good pairing, but actually it is so yummy. It's my favorite out of the two. There you have it, roasted winter squash detox soup. Hopefully this will warm your soul this fall and winter season. And I also wanted to give further mention about the detox fabulousness of this soup. If you're planning to do a more serious cleanse, such as a three-day fast, I always recommend to do a pre-cleanse phase and a post-cleanse phase to a fast. This soup is a fabulous recipe to add to a pre-cleanse or a post-cleanse because it doesn't have the animal proteins, the fats, or the dairies in it, which makes it so clean and smooth through the digestive tract, perfect for a pre-cleanse or a post-cleanse. And as you know, eating this soup every day would be amazing for your body as well. So eat up and enjoy. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and I'd love to have you subscribe to my channel so you can be a part of clean food living and have fun with more recipes just like this. And as promised, here's my video link to how to roast squash into caramelization. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.